Patrick Gargano here from the Learning and Certifications team. And Hank Preston here, also from the Learning and Certifications team, back to talk to you all about the CCNA Blueprint domains and how to become prepared for your certification exam. What's on tap for today? Listen, it's domain four. Um, right away, as I'm looking at domain four, which is all about IP services. Obviously, we'll talk about what IP services is all about, but the thing that jumps out right away at me is it's just 10%. What, what I mean by that, again, I'm repeating myself from previous videos. If you have 100 questions uh, in the CCNA exam, about 10% of those are going to come from this specific domain. It's a big domain in terms of topics, but it's a small domain in terms of weight in the exam. Yeah, So, but keeping that in mind, right, we, when you're studying for any exam, um, no matter what it is, right, you, you only have so much time. So you have to focus in, you have to prioritize how you're going to approach it. So you may look at 10% here and say, ah, We'll just, we'll bypass this. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. Uh, don't fall into that. It's still an important piece. And there are nine different tasks that talk about different services. And so you do have to spend enough time to become comfortable with being able to configure and explain and describe some of these services that are here. And so what exactly is an IP service, Patrick? I mean, looking at the at the domain, it's very wide range. So it's it's a service that is running on the network after the network is up and running. So right, your your layer two is functional, your layer three is functional, and now you're ready to deploy some services to allow those hosts maybe to connect to the network environment. So the one that jumps out at me right away is the DHCP one. So mm -hmm. right, obviously we want our D, our devices, our PCs, our laptops, our phones to get an IP address when they connect to the network. That's a service. That's an IP service, and so this one is covered here. And notice it's a configure and verification task. So it's, a, it's an important one. It is. It's super important. Now, the way I like to think about IP services are these are the applications that network engineers are responsible for, yes. right? Another really critical application that network engineers are often responsible for is DNS, domain name services. And so IP addressing is how packets are sent across the network. But we don't ever think, we don't memorize the IP address for Cisco.com. Right. We don't memorize the IP address for Cisco U. No, we, rem we memorize domain names, Cisco I even said it, Cisco.com, u.cisco.com, or uh, maybe your favorite news site or social media site. DNS, domain name services, is this translation service that allows us to know a name and then translate that into an IP address for actual communications that are there. And so that is probably my favorite service yeah. that we have to understand in here. And it does show up inside of this um, domain that's there. Uh, DNS and DHCP, <laughs> 4.3 is where it falls into. I knew it was there someplace. It's such a crazy Because they, they go hand in hand, right? If you, if you, um, you know, configured a DHCP pool or DH, DHCP server, usually you'll get uh, the DNS information at the same time. Um, the other one that jumps out, and you should all be familiar about this one already, to a certain extent, is NAT, so 4.1. You've got internet at home, you've got your router, your broadband router that you got from your service provider. Guess what? It's doing some sort of a NAT, allowing your devices at home to connect to the internet. So it's a fundamental service, again, an IP service, translating those private addresses to public addresses, um, and it's in this particular domain. Yeah. Another aspect that we've talked about several times on these videos is the importance of the verbs that show up mm -hmm. on the blueprint. And so I, here's an area where we can really see the difference. Several of these tasks are about configuring and verifying DHCP and DNS yeah. or NAT. 4.7 just says explain how QoS works, yeah. right? This is a key aspect. QoS, quality of service, is really critical to networks, but it's a complicated topic. Mm -hmm. it's, a, yeah. it's a more advanced topic. So here at the CCNA level, we're not going to ask you or expect you to know how to configure it. The idea here is just explain what's the importance, what role does it serve in the network? Right? How does uh, topics like is classification or queuing factor into what the network does? Again, you don't have to know how to configure it for the CCNA. You simply need to know how to explain what it means as it goes through. We're attracting some friends. That we, we are. In, in the, air in here. The, the other thing that jumps out at me as well in domain four is the, the kind of split that I'm seeing between services for hosts mm -hmm. and services for network engineers. What I'm talking about here are things like SNMP and Syslog and obviously Telnet and SSH. These are all services. And NTP is another important one, right? right? Network time protocol. These are all important services, not just for your, your clients, but it's for the network admin, right? To be able to troubleshoot and diagnose and verify how the network's operating. Yeah. Those are functions that we refer to often as like network operations, actually operating the network that yeah. goes in. Yeah. And so some of these IP services are focused on so that we can successfully operate the network in a secure fashion. Yes. Now we're gonna talk about security in another video where we dive into that domain. But one thing that you'll notice is that security topics will show up across yes. the blueprint because yeah. security isn't its own bolt-on thing, 
right? There are areas we wanna focus on, but we see in here, configure uh, network devices for remote access using SSH. Secure, uh, oh boy. Sec secure socket. Host, I wanna say host, but <laughs> boy. Shell, secure shell. Oh man, see, just goes to show. Doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, sometimes these acronyms can go through. But the important part of SSH is it's a secure way to talk to your network, to manage your network devices that are in there. And you'll notice we dive into that here in IP services. And it's a configure task, right? It is. So it's not task. just how does it work, but actually how do you enable it on a router? What are the commands that you would you would type in? Mm -hmm. And so imagine that you're uh, doing the CCNA exam and you come to one of these lablets, one of these simulated lab environments, and the task is simply that. Log into this R1 router and enable SSH for remote access. Could be as simple as that. Yeah, absolutely. So you need to practice that. Again, yes. talking about things like packet tracer, CML, oh, yeah. so that you can you get your hands dirty, right? Log into these routers. I mean, if you're lucky and you've got access to hardware, fantastic. But we've got loads of tools that you can use. Um, simulated environments, obviously Cisco U Labs as oh, well, yeah, um, where you could practice all of this. Yeah. And that's, I think, a key aspect. We've seen a lot of configuration tasks in the blueprint. If there is a task that has configure in the, the, the name, that's the verb that's there, make sure that you sat down and spent time practicing those configuration exams. You can do that on your own using tools like Packet Tracer, CML, as yeah. mentioned. But absolutely, if you dive into Cisco U, you can find the entire CCNA um, course yep. that is full of labs that will walk you through every single one of the configure tasks on the blueprint. I have to do a few shameless plugs. Oh, we'll do the CCNA prep ones. We've been putting together some videos to help kind of help you understand all of these configuration tasks. So far, we focused on things like VLANs and trunk and ether channel and OSPF and routing. We're gonna do a few more on IP services and, and security. But the other shameless plug is if you go back to Cisco U, you create a free account, we have loads of tutorials. So these are kind of like hands-on labs again, where you get to be able to practice things like configuring OSPF or ether channels. Awesome. All right, well, I think we've done IP services yes, justice. I think so. We'll be back for other domains in this video series. Thanks for joining us. Cheers.